So the next part that we're gonna create in Autodesk Inventor is a bracket for our wheel assembly. Now you'll notice on the sheet here, I have all the dimensions laid out for that particular bracket. Now just a word about Inventor, you can make parts more than one particular way. So take for example, this bracket right over here. Now my very, very first sketch, I could actually just put in a rectangle if I want, extrude that, the uh, width, which would be 1.5 inches, and then I could actually create a sketch on a new surface and do a cut extrusion on this part. Now that's one way of doing it. Another way I could of course do it is I could actually just draw out the perimeter or the outline of the bracket, finish my sketch, and then actually apply and extrude over here, which is actually what I'm going to do in this particular case. Now also we're going to be learning about construction lines a little bit later on in this tutorial. So let's go into Inventor here. And you'll notice I have a small little home button right over here. So I want to click on that home button and I want to create another part. So let's go ahead and do so. Now, if you recall from the last lesson, everything starts with a two dimensional sketch. So I'm going to click on a 2D sketch and I have to determine probably what is the best plane to use. Now the bracket is kind of upright and it's long. So let's go ahead and use another one of these vertical planes over here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is draw out the outline or the perimeter of this bracket and then we're gonna extrude it. Now, if you recall from the last lesson as well too, you typically wanna design around the center point. So I'm gonna actually do the bottom center of the bracket right over here, touching this. Now, one thing that we can do though, is we can actually draw lines that are not used in the extrusion or 3D feature uh, phase of the uh, part that we're creating. So here I have something called construction lines. So with the construction line, it's like a guideline is the best way of describing it. So I'm gonna turn this on for now, take my line, and I'm gonna actually just type in 0 0.8 inches, and I'm gonna hit escape. Now you'll notice right over here that the line's actually dotted. Again, it's a guideline. It's not gonna be used for any three-dimensional features. And the reason being is because I'm trying to make a symmetrical part uh, that goes actually through this Y-axis or this Y-plane right over here. Okay, so let me turn off my construction line, take my line tool here, and connecting, I'm gonna zoom out, and I'm going to type in 0 0.8 again. From here, I'm gonna go with a height of 3.5, and again, when you're working with this program, it's really important that you always type in your dimensions. If you don't, it's going to be a little bit harder to edit a little bit later on and change things around. So I'm going to come across this way, and I'm going to type in a value of 3.2 inches. And I could just go ahead like this, and you'll notice that it says 3.5, and I click, and it's not dimension. Not a big deal, but... It's always a good idea to dimension. If you forget to do that, I'll just show you in just a moment how you'd actually go about doing that. Okay, so coming across this way, 0 0.8. And let's go up here, 1.6. And then I'm gonna go in just a little bit here at one point or 0 0.3. And I'm going to go up 1.4. And I'm going to come across 2.2. Go back down again 1.4. And you can see how it's all symmetrical. Okay, great. So that's the outline of my part. I know there's lots of dimension lines and it is a bit confusing. Now the reason why you like to dimension things or always put in numerical values is simple. Suppose I want to make this whole thing, uh, for example, wider. So if I go ahead and double click and change this to say 3.5 inches and hit the check mark, you'll see that it goes a little bit wider. Now I realize it doesn't exactly go to proportion and that's fine. So I'm just going to control Z and put that back. Um, same thing over here. If I wanted to actually just take this and realize, hey, maybe I should have 0 0.7. You can see how that just also alters it every once in a while uh, and just kind of like makes it a little bit thinner, changes the value in general. Okay, um, so you'll notice I do have some areas without measurements and that's easy enough for me to do. I'm just going to go ahead and just take my dimension here. So this is if you forget to add dimensions. So I'm just going to go from here to here. And then there you can see it's all dimensioned. Now, it says dimension will over-constrain, just accept it. There you go, and that's all dimensioned out. 
Okay, so I think we have the rough outline of what we want. And so we're gonna do an extrude in the enclosed area. Of course, this dotted line is a construction line and will not be included. Remember, you turn on and off your construction line just like this. All right, so we're gonna leave that and click on Finish Sketch. Now the neat thing about the project browser too is if I actually just go over here, you'll notice that it actually selects that particular feature. So if I do wanna ever go back and change my sketch, what I can do is I can click on here and then you can see right here, I can actually go back and edit this particular sketch, which we don't wanna do, but let's just finish that sketch up. All right, so let's go ahead and put an extrusion feature on here. So I'm gonna click on Extrude and then there it is. But we definitely wanna extrude this a little wider and the width that we're gonna do is gonna be 1.5. and click on OK. So that's pretty much the overall outline. Now, of course, I have to put in some holes in here too, so that I definitely plan to do on one of these faces, or this face, or this face, it really doesn't matter. So let's click on this. Let's create a new sketch. Notice my project browser, how that just got added to here. And what I wanna do is I actually wanna add a construction line here. So let me go ahead and click on that construction line and I'm going to find the midpoint once I take my line tool and it has a nice midpoint snap feature and I'm going to put a construction line at zero decimal eight just like that hit escape let's turn this construction or guideline feature off now I'm actually ready to put in a circle so the circle I'm going to put is just right at the end of the construction line here and I'm going to put in a value of zero decimal eight two finish the sketch. Now you could, if you wanted to, to do the exact same sketch on this side, but there's no need for it. Inventor's pretty smart when it does its cut extrusions. It could actually blast through two different forms or parts. Um, and so in doing that, let's go ahead and click on extrude. And again, what we want to do is we want to do a cut extrusion. And then I'm just going to grab this here and I'm going to blast the hole right through all the way, just like that. Okay, so that looks great. You can see that I have two holes from a single cut extrusion. Let's put in another hole here by creating another sketch. And I'm gonna do the same thing as before. I'm gonna use my construction line and find the midpoint right about there and go across. Don't forget to turn this off or when you try doing a 3D feature attached to a sketch, it's not gonna work. So that's turned off now. All right, let's take my circle and it's gonna find the midpoint quite easily for me. It'll just snap in there. Same size uh, hole as before, zero decimal eight two. Let's finish off that sketch. Okay, so from here, what I can do is do another cut extrusion and then click on okay. So that is my bracket made very, very easy. And uh, like I mentioned in the last exercise, you can actually start from a single block and then you can actually create a sketch then just you know cutting this part out completely up to you. Uh, there's lots of different ways of actually creating parts in Inventor and it's really solely based on your imagination. Now, a quick word right over here. What I notice a lot is sometimes students go and I wanna create a feature here and they're like, oh, forget it, I made a mistake. Okay, so that's fine. And suppose you do the same thing over here and you create a sketch and then you don't do anything and then go right over here. Now you'll notice there's a small little dot here and there's a small little dot here. And that just tells me that there's actually a sketch that doesn't actually contain any lines or information. Now you'll also notice right over here too that you have these two sketches and they're actually not associated with any three dimensional features. So you'll notice right from the beginning, this is my original sketch, which I extruded. And here's my whole sketch, which I did a cut extrusion. And then my last is gonna be the top hole. All right, now when you create a whole bunch of sketches that have nothing in them, you definitely wanna clean them up afterwards. So every single sketch that you have should always be associated with a particular three dimensional feature, whether it's extrude, revolve, uh, sweep and loss, which you'll be learning about a little bit later on in the course. All right, so let's actually just clean this up a little bit and I'm just gonna select this, right click, delete, and you'll notice that dot disappears. Same thing with this one right over here. Select, right click, and delete. So let's go ahead and save this. Now let's bracket.
Don't forget to use the text tool and you can also create a new surface here with the text tool and you can do an ext uh, cut extrusion on uh, and put part in there, uh, part number two if you want to. All right, so that concludes this lesson. And in the next lesson, what we're gonna be doing is using the revolve tool to create um, essentially like a wheel. So we're gonna work with half a profile to spin it around an axis to create some pretty cool looking uh, features. All right, that's it for now.